get into Q because I wanted to talk about pedophilia and QAnon, and you've been talking about this for a long, long time, but Robbie, it just reached critical mass. Let's set up the QAnon discussion by just really quickly okay. talking about the walls closing in with the Mueller investigation. Yes. Because so Rudy Giuliani did an incredible thing. He went on CNN live for 30 minutes straight, defending all these new allegations that have been piling up against Trump through the Mueller investigation, like right when Manafort was going on trial. And it's one of the worst, I mean, jobs I've ever seen Rudy do uh, so far. It's truly incredible that Trump thinks this is working in his favor. And the things Trump has been tweeting about Mueller, I mean, even today, I mean, he's just some, totally out of left field. But like, I was like, oh, damn, like Trump is going for the jugular. He's like, the fake news media is super dangerous. They could start war, exclamation mark. <laughs> <laughs> and like all these people are like, oh my God. Chuck Todd was like, I have to respond to this right now. So Trump seems like he's just totally freaking out about this Mueller investigation. Something totally out of left field that Rudy Giuliani threw out during that 30 minute interview because Trump tweeted it that day that why doesn't Mueller talk about the business dispute that we had? Is he going to mention what it was about? Trump tweeted this. And then Rudy Giuliani was asked about it. And he's like, well, I can't talk about that. As his lawyer, I'm not allowed to talk about that. And they're like, but what is he even talking about? Right. Like, why didn't Trump mention this months ago when he was appointed as the special prosecutor? Why didn't he say there's a conflict of interest here? I had a business dispute with this guy. Why would he throw that out now? It just seems like Trump is being cornered and freaking out. So right. what's so weird about getting to Q is that I didn't realize this fully until maybe like a month ago that one of the core narratives in the Q conspiracy, the QAnon conspiracy, in case anybody hasn't listened to me and Abby discuss this before, the QAnon is an anonymous 4chan, 8chan poster who since October, I think 17th, 2017, has been posting claiming to be an insider in the Trump administration with Q security clearance who knows that the deep state is trying to take down Trump and he's part of a insider counter coup to take down the deep state with the help of the U.S. military, top military intelligence and U.S. military to stop this deep state coup that's comprised of Hillary Clinton, the Obama administration, John Brennan, Comey, all these former administration officials. But one of the interesting parts of this conspiracy that I didn't really understand is that Q also claims that Mueller is not actually investigating Trump, is that he is... Sec what is he saying he's doing? That he is secretly investigating and about to take down all of these deep state coup people. Wait, what? And that's, so it's like a pro Mueller twist? Yes. Mueller is a white what? secret white hat, and it's all a smokescreen and a distraction. So even Rudy Giuliani's performance on TV... That was just like beautiful Oscar winning acting on the part of Rudy oh, wow. Giuliani. So it's getting Trump's super crazy complex. unhinged tweets where he's getting mad at Mueller every day and throwing out business dispute shit. That's all part of the plan. Oh, wow. Cool. And I didn't realize this actually until the media. This is what was so interesting and why we're talking about it again is the media finally had to talk about this QAnon conspiracy. When I say the media, I mean the mainstream media CNN, Fox News, MSNBC. Vice News all started doing segments on it because Trump's Pennsylvania rally that was like a week ago, and I don't know if this is why they decided to do it. I, I mean, I'm not sure what the decision was that made them finally cover it. But at his rally, there was like 50 or 60 people with Q signs and Q shirts all taking up the video frame of his speech at the rally. There was like a guy with like a huge Q cutout was covering nuts. his entire body. It was yeah. like a bodysuit. A colored and magic marker. You could see he ran out of ink on of the magic American marker flag. and had to like use a new mm -hmm. one like to fill it in. Oh, what was even weirder, Trump tweeted, and keep in mind, Q has claimed that he's close to Trump personally and that Trump has been winking and nodding and hinting at Q's existence the whole time. So this is part of the conspiracy also is that Trump knows about it and he approves of it and that they're together and trust the plan to drain the swamp and destroy the deep state. After this rally, Trump actually posted a video of it and the very first frame of the video was a guy waving a giant Q symbol like at 0 zero zero into the video. And I was just like, what the fuck? That's nuts. Like this is the video that the White House released officially? 
So the discussion, I mean, this is so, what's so weird is that then the, there is a debate here, not, see, because, and then maybe this makes me seem crazy, is I am leaning towards the idea now that Trump's White House is winking and nodding to QAnon, but the idea of Q being actually close to Trump is, we have no idea if that's actually true. It could just be the Trump White House winking and nodding to it because they approve of what its goal seems to be, which is to lock down and make Trump's base stay intact and have all this faith that he's actually draining the swamp and that he's not going to get impeached and that the Mueller investigation is actually the opposite of what it seems. So let me just give credit to Pierce Redman of Porkins Policy because I was having this discussion with them and I was like telling him, you know, that actually kind of convinced me that actually is some kind of truth to the idea that this person is close to Trump. And he's like, well, what about if it's just Trump's people know about this QAnon anonymous poster and want to wink and nod to it? Even if they're not, you know, it has nothing to do with them. And I'm like, oh, shit, like that actually could work. That's maybe even more likely. So Sarah Sanders was actually asked about Q for the first time in a press conference in the White House by a Newsmax reporter. She totally dodges and ignores the question and says she doesn't approve of any like violent fringe protesters like coming to Trump's rallies. Jared Holt of Right Wing Watch has been doing a lot of good coverage on Q. He thinks that that's also possible that at this point, it does seem like by omitting it at the very least, by the Trump administration not addressing it and letting it go on for this long, that they actually are actively encouraging it, sort of like winking and nodding to it. So that's very possible, I think. There were all these rumors that came out that Cernovich spread saying that Trump's Secret Service removed people's Q signs at the rally. And Sean Hannity Right around this time where Q said the biggest drop, the world is going to like change forever, the month of August 2018, Sean Hannity, who's already not just dog whistled to Q, but retweeted Q and non-promoting Twitter accounts, told Mark Levine the Mueller witch hunt won't matter in a month because something big is about to come out that'll blow it out of the water. And I mean, that seems to be directly referencing the Q posts that like happened that week. That's what's so bizarre about all this. It's just crazy that this has gone on this long. CNN, MSNBC, media is finally starting to cover it. But Sean Hannity has been like sort of winking to it for a while. And there's something about these 3,000 sealed indictments that all the Q followers believe is actually secretly the Obamas and the Clintons and all these people who are part of this deep state coup to try to remove Trump from office that are actually going to be indicted at the end of all this. It's really strange. I mean, I don't even know what else to say about it. So, Robbie, one of the craziest things to me about this was how non-fringe the QAnon thing is. At first, you know, you've been talking about this for so long because you've been plugged into this like subculture. But it is so fucking mainstream that we're talking about one rally here. It's not that QAnon people came from all over the country like the Unite the Right thing to show up. This is his base. It's hard to actually gauge. I don't know how many if there's actually been any polls done to see how many of his supporters or how many people on the right believe in this, but seeing it in a Pennsylvania rally, all these local people mostly um, wearing these shirts and holding these signs, I think was just very revealing of how, how many people in his base actually believe in this. It really all came to a head. I think that's part of why the mainstream media decided to cover it at that point. Why do you think they let them in the rally? You know, like they vet people to be yeah, home yeah, Trump yeah. and stuff. Why do they let them in? I'm leaning towards the idea now that Trump's own people are winking and nodding to this and letting it go on forever or just letting it go on on purpose because they think somehow it helps them. But Q has been trying to convince all his followers that he's actually not just um, approved by Trump, but that he's like close to Trump and then he's in communication with him. So it just gets really weird because on this Vice News special that they did about it, a guy sat down with two of his Q supporters who were at the rally who were the, like Vice News spotted wearing Q memorabilia, Q shirts. They went back to their house like the day after, I think, to interview them about it. In a lot of ways, a lot of the things they were saying, I was like surprised. The guy was like going through all these different conspiracies. He's like, do you believe in the JFK conspiracies? Do you believe in this, this? And the things that they believed and didn't believe, I was like, well, you know, they're actually kind of more intelligent in some ways than like the average conspiracy theorist. I was a little bit surprised at first. So the president points at you. How quickly after that did you know that like this had become a big deal? 
I was driving home, and he jumped on his iPad. <laughs> yes, I always go to the Great Awakening on Reddit. It's like my site for the queue. And somebody said uh, to the guy with the queue, cut out. Q's looking for you. <laughs> and I guess Q did post while we were there. Trump pointed you out purposely. We had no clue. And then everybody's like, Q and half the world's looking for you. <laughs> it's confirmed. Yeah. Confir what's confirmed? Confirmed that it's Trump. It's not him, but it's the Q team. And he validates it by doing those little things. Mm -hmm. Letting us know that, you know, he hears us and, you know, we're on the same, it's the Q movement team. Is, I mean, is this a fun thing to know about, a fun thing to be a part yes. of? Be it's fun because things get revealed. It's fun because we know before it's going to happen a lot of times. And then they actually said something that I hate to admit kind of like convinced me into thinking that Trump was directly winking and nodding to QAnon a few months back. I think it was actually on Easter Day. He was on the White House balcony and the Vice News reporter is like, well, so what, you know, what was one of the things that convinced you that this was real? It was a guy who was actually um, really close to Trump or was like telling the truth. And they're like, well, he told us to follow the white rabbit poster asked Q, is there something, can you get Trump to fit in the phrase tip top to prove that, that you're real? And Q said, I'll see what I can do. And then uh, the next day, I guess was Easter, Trump is there on the, the balcony of the White House with a rabbit in a rabbit costume, a white rabbit <laughs> costume. And he said, he goes on a very bizarre rant where he says that this house, this place, this building, whatever it's called, we like to keep it in a, in a tip-top shape. And as some like to say, tippy-top shape. Basically, that happening convinced thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people into believing that this is definitely real now. And it kind of really personally weirded me out because it definitely seems like more than just a coincidence. So, yeah, and then Q wrote, did you watch today? Yeah. Like, he said it. Yep, yep. It's really creepy, and it's even creepier that an article that I collaborated with Whitney Webb on got mentioned by QAnon in a posting. His actual posting was posted on June 28th. He says, desperate agencies do stupid things. Dead cat bounce. You may have the site, but we have the source. Then he links to WikiLeaks tweeting out the article that Whitney Webb and I collaborated on, which was an article in Mint Press News saying that this seems like a neocon slant, that QAnon is pushing Iranian regime change. What is this? Is this some kind of like Trump administration psyop? That's what our article is about. QAnon continues his post saying, panic is good, panic is right. July 2018, the month the world discovers the truth. Conspiracy no more, time to feed. So that's interesting because he was saying July was the month but it's actually already passed now. We're in August and nothing you know, big has come out since then. So it's very weird. I don't know really what to make of it at this point other than just being creeped out by it because what is it? And a lot of actually smart people who are, hadn't really commented on QAnon before are starting to echo similar sentiments. So I don't feel as crazy anymore for thinking that this actually might be something that Trump's White House is part of. When you were talking about this, I always thought it was just a shit poster because just the, he couldn't even spell or, you know, his grammar was really bad. I mean, it was a complete joke. And I thought it was just, you know, a shit poster just basically doing it all for lulls until the white rabbit tippy top thing. That convinced me that, yeah, Trump is definitely nodding to this shit, just like he nodded to 9-11 truth, just like he nodded to all these conspiracies. That's why he, you know, used Roger Stone as this liaison to bolster the conspiracy community to be on his side. That's why you see the conspiracy culture suddenly adulating a sitting president and Infowars now, you know, embracing Trump as this messiah. So I think it all is part and parcel. I think that Trump knows to keep that base just like he knows to nod to Joe Arpaio's people, the Bundy people. What's sad about watching these people is, like you said, like their distrust in the media is valid and they had good things to say about that, but then they'll just go off into this horrible tangent that just is nonsensical and the fact is i mean a lot of the stuff that QAnon is hitting on is true kernels of things that i subscribe to 
it's interesting how it's weaving That's what I'm in saying, yeah. It's weaving in things that like resonate a lot. A lot of this like fake news media stuff is also being driven by QAnon. I mean, some of the QAnon supporters told CNN as they were walking by asking these people wearing Q shirts in line for the Trump rally, "Why do you support this guy?" And the guy's like, "You're CNN, you're fake news." And like, "Well, what do you mean by that?" And the guy's like, "You're weaponized by the CIA." That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And that's I was like, I was "Oh like, shit!" What? Like, that's like yeah. actually, I, I kind of agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I was like, "Wait, what?" But yeah. then he like didn't know how to explain it. And Anderson Cooper's like, "What does that even mean? Weaponized by the CIA?" It's like you know what that <laughs> means, you little fucker. You know what it's that like means. Anderson. You're not the best person to comment on that because you actually did work for them. Yeah, or like we're trying to work for whatever that yeah, actual had a little internship. First, I was really obsessed with trying to figure out who it was because I thought it was someone who could have been already a personality in conspiracy world. Maybe it was Roger Stone. Maybe it was, and then I then I started getting obsessed with: Is it close to Trump? Is Trump just winking and nodding to it? Is it actually Trump's White House running some kind of disinfo psyop? And then that became less interesting to me because then I thought, well, if it's close to Trump or not, what's the goal of it? What is the end goal of this? Because it's really powerful, obviously. We can't deny anymore. Nobody can deny it. Mainstream media can't ignore it anymore. It's I know. I think it's pretty obvious. The end goal is to continue to galvanize this base of people into a seedy, nonsense conspiracy that Trump is somehow battling the deep state behind the scenes. It doesn't matter what yeah. he does publicly in a public forum. All that matters is that this narrative is still thriving online and being fed by this Q poster. So these people will still continue, no matter what Trump does or stack his cabinet with deep state neocon war criminals, they'll still say, this is all a show. Follow the white rabbit. There's still things going on behind the scenes, the indictments. And then it just keeps morphing. That's yeah. what I find so fascinating about the Q thing is like, it's all encompassing, just like Russiagate. That's why I talk about mass hallucinations on both sides. Just like Russiagate encapsulates everything now, mm -hmm. so does Q and the pedogate thing. It's yeah. everything. It's every arrest. It's every story of a pedophile in the US. That's all back to Trump. It's all back to Q. Trump is doing this. You know, he's tweeting. He wants you to pretend he wants to pretend like he's live tweeting Fox News, but in reality, he's sending out the cabal to arrest pedos. And I just had an argument with someone who heard me on the Sam Tripoli show talking about how I think it's bullshit and pedogate isn't real. And he was like, what about this? And it was just a random story about an arrest of a pedophile. It was like, how could you possibly think this is some mastermind operation? It's just a random arrest of some guy. Yeah. And then he was like, well, what about this? Because then it morphed into this, where then he posted how Trump announced that January was like sex trafficking awareness month. This means that he's doing something. And then I just quickly looked up a cursory search of what Obama did about sex trafficking. And Obama actually announced January sex trafficking month. It says a CNN article... President Obama has declared this January National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month, marking the U.S. commitment to end human trafficking. So it's basically the same exact shit. Presidential Proclamation, National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month, 2017. This was in 2016, December 28th. So they were already doing this during the Obama administration. Trump is just echoing these sentiments with a bunch of fluff, but it's just all encompassing. People will just point to that and be like, but look, Trump did this. It's like, Trump did what? He literally just released a statement on the White House echoing what Obama did. It's kind of nuts because I feel like it's all coming to a head now where the Trump administration has to make a decision now to address this. The press is going to ask them more questions about this, no doubt. Mm -hmm. I think that part of the reason I'm thinking about this a little more as we're talking about, maybe they're realizing now that Trump's administration or just the internet, like it's scary enough to think that Alex Jones could do like the worst case scenario and tell his followers it's time to like pick up your arms and fight the deep state. That's scary enough. But at the very least, like we know who's behind it. Like it's Alex Jones. He's in Austin, Texas. It's like a tangible. But what if like QAnon does it? An unknown person. Right. There's no accountability. It's so weird. Or traceability. Yeah. The Trump administration even if they're just winking and nodding to it and this have nothing to do with this, they could use it to their advantage to really do some scary shit. I mean, I don't know if that's the goal of whoever's posting as the QAnon thing, but in their own words, they say they're part of a military intelligence secret group of counter deep state coup people who are doing a counter coup. Where does that go? You know, like where does that fantasy go even if it's just all made up fantasy? It's scary, I think. 
I'm glad that more people are taking it seriously now. Actually, I'm worried now that people are going to start saying it's a Russian disinformation operation of some kind. But Sean Spicer, actually in an AMA, uh, I think it was maybe even yesterday, was Why asked. What the fuck is Sean Spicer doing AMA? I know. Is that ridiculous? Jesus. He was asked, is Q legit? And he said, nope. So that's ah. actually the first time anyone from the administration, former or current, has actually shot down the idea of it. But he, I think he left like around the same time it started. Trump will still use it to his advantage because he knows that there's this base of like complete delusional people who will do anything for him because they think that he's fighting the goddamn deep state, whatever that means to them.